ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Dominic. I'm Amajal Knowles with your ZNS Total Sports. Well, the boats finally hit the water yesterday over in Exuma as the first set of races got underway in the 2020 edition of the Bull Reg Regatta over in Exuma, with the New Year's races being hotly contested and a new young face making his mark early. Look at the standings in the C-Class after day one. In first place was the Bull Reg skippered by Chris Porgy Roll. In second was the Miss Rui skippered by Leslie Buzzy Roll. And in third was the Fugitive skippered by Tyrone McKenzie. Uh, we had a good race. We had a good race today. We um, we didn't get in. We were supposed to have two races today, and um, the breeze was in in our favor today. So we got in one, and it was it it it, it, it was made great. It. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, um, uh, the favorite boat come out, um, Bull Reds, uh -huh. and uh, they did a good job. Yeah, they jumped out in front and never looked back. Um, Buzzy, well he. He let his son beat him again. We had a great race today. You know, my son uh, gave us a great, I mean, I gave my son a great challenge, but, uh, you know, that he ended up victorious. Well, the guys, they're, they're learning. They're learning, you know, and uh, I'll be happy to step aside, you know, and I, once they are uh, putting their, their best foot forward, uh, like Chris now, he's doing excellent. You know, I want more guys to step up like him. From the NBA in his first game, back from a nagging ankle injury, DeAndre Ayton managed to post 16 points, going 7 of 13 from the field with 14 rebounds and 2 assists and 1 steal as well as a block in 32 minutes of play in the Suns' 117-107 loss to the Lakers last night. Ayton grabbing a season-high 14 rebounds, producing his third double-double of the 2019-2020 campaign despite coming off the bench. On the season, he's averaged 14.5 points, 12.3 boards, and 1.5 blocks in just four appearances due to suspension and injury. The big man has also pulled down double-digit boards in all four appearances as he gets healthy and works his way back into game shape. Aiton next up for the Suns will be the New York Knicks, who will have the ninth most rebounds per game in the league. Aiton certainly should have a good night on the boards in that matchup. More from the NBA, but the Illinois Kings are currently on a six-game slide, and he's hoping going up tempo can help them turn things around. Just to get back to that type of action, just putting guys on the heel, and Fox just pushing the ball, and uh, we running him, and just getting that confidence. And uh, I think when we do it for two quarters straight or three quarters straight, and see that, you know, and uh, see that we're hard to stop in those runs. It's go time. No, we, we can't wait no more. No, the product we put in the floor is not tanking. Tanking flow 500. We're way better than that, but obviously we're not winning games to show that, but. We, we are way better than this, and we need to figure it out, really. Uh, it is what it is, man. You just got to play basketball. There's something you love doing. Uh, you can't panic. And uh, if you panic, then nothing is making anything worse. But the center is you go there and play hard. And uh, if you just really see making the playoffs, you got to go out there and compete. And uh, it's just making it more tougher for us. But, you know, I think that we need to just get, get together and, uh, and uh, just watch film and just keep studying, man. And uh, starts on the first game. Coming out the new year and uh, just start setting the tune and uh, getting after it. Hopefully this new year brings us a spark for sure. College basketball news, the Ole Miss women's basketball team currently sits 7-6 and six on the season as they head into their conference opener tonight against the 9-4 and four Georgia Bulldogs, a team that is looking to start off their conference season with a win as well. Coach Olette McPhee McEwen on what she has learned about her team so far in the early season. I learned that it's a, a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, I... I'm really going to focus on us doing w winning games within the game because realistically speaking, uh, I don't know what's going to happen night in and night out. They're going to be prepared. I want them to feel confidence. But in order for us to do that, we have to find wins within the game. You get what I'm saying? So, like, whether it's keeping the team at a certain point that quarter or whether it's us getting a certain level of assists or a certain amount of transition uh, points because there are some things when we get to SEC play that physically we won't be able to sustain. And if we can't box out Alabama State, which they're pretty athletic, you know, SWAC teams are usually athletic. I coach in the SWAC. But we're going to struggle boxing out 
the Georgias, Mississippi State. So, so we have to find other ways to gain advantages. And there are some coaches out there that don't even care about rebounding if they could shoot the three ball. So if we could get in transition and steal a couple threes, that, that can balance it. Coach Yo on the confidence level of her team. Half glass full type gal. And so last year we won six. We won seven. You know? And so uh, for me, that's a victory within itself. And Parrish, I just remember at the beginning of the season telling my staff, listen, I don't know how much we're going to be able to look at wins and losses and say that the foundation was laid this year. Uh, but I know that we can find wins throughout this season. And uh, I just know for me, uh, I'm trying, working on staying encouraged. And I was just listening to Dabo Sweeney. He put out a post, and he was like, in year one they had 11 wins, but then year two they had six. And he said, I know it didn't look good, but we laid the foundation. And then in year three, and then he went on and on. So I just, I, we're on the right track uh, for where we want to go. You know, and uh, I just got to keep our kids uplifted through this because I call the SEC a jungle. <laughs> and so we're getting ready to go into the safari, and, uh, and, some, and, and we better not have butter knives. We better be ready to fight. And so um, we're going to lean on the players that played in it last year to, to help us understand that. And, and as coaches, we're way more prepared because we've been through the jungle one time before. Former NFL wide receiver DeVar Darling was back home in the 242, and he gave our Zenith whole sports team an update on how life has been going post football. And you know, uh, you know, this is all about the next generation now. I'm retired now. Football is done for me. So uh, you know, it's all about you know, I have two young, uh, three young sons coming up. You know, and helping back and giving back to the community is what I'm all about, man. So coaching them up in flag football, helping other athletes get right and mentor them mentally uh, about the, I guess, the mental aspect of being a professional athlete, which is, uh, which is the toughest part. So uh, you got to have the total package these days to, to make the big bucks. Of course, I try to follow everyone on Instagram, and every time I see a Bahamian athlete, a young Bahamian athlete out there doing well, for sure, I, I, I go behind them and support them, you know. So, uh, I like I said, I'm, I'm an open book. I love to reach out and, and talk to mentor any young Bahamian athlete, you know, learning or wanting to know how, how it is to be a pro. Bahamian tennis player Justin Roberts speaking on the proposed changes to the Davis Cup format, as well as his plans for 2020. I think it's probably just better for players in general. I think for group three, it's going to be the same. But for the higher groups, they have everything in one week is good. Uh, keep the schedules a little bit shorter because we, we, we have a very demanding year. I mean, we we go from January through the end of November, early December. So to have everything done in one week instead of spreading it out helps helps the players a lot. 100% 2024, I plan to play the Olympics. That's my biggest goal. Um, in the next two years, three years, I want to be playing in the Grand Slam, qualities or main draws. So this coming year is a big step for me. I want to make my ranking high enough so I can play the Challenger Tour, which is the next step after the Futures. So uh, I just look to, to get past the Futures in this next year or so and then move into Challengers and ATPs in the, in the near future, hopefully. And that's been a look at sports. A quick check on weather is up next. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.